All right, so here's the intro on the uh, PAC radio. This is a modular system that I'm setting up, kind of an experiment, so bear with me as I uh, go through some of the features and what I'm, what I'm trying to accomplish with this thing. Uh, basically, this is something that would be kind of an addendum to a bug out bag, something I could transfer from vehicle to vehicle, run a higher powered radio than just a handheld, and open myself up to a few more options on how to recharge the radio. But the big thing is, this is a, it's a higher powered radio bag. I needed to have a self-contained power source, the ability to charge that power source, and run it with some other devices. The other thing is, because this is kind of a proof of concept project, I wanted to be able to start with a relatively low-end but capable radio and then upgrade to something else better later on, like the, um, the one of the 817 uh, type radios that the uh, guy over at Survival Tech Nord seems to think pretty highly of. And from what I can tell, they, they are nice. But what I'm doing is basically a self-contained field radio set. It's not submersible waterproof, but I wanted to be able to protect the radio from the weather and have kind of a ruggedized container for moving this in the field. This isn't really a tactical run and gun type of a thing, but I think with some modifications, I could actually accomplish a fair amount of that. The pack is made to basically, it's a child's book bag type thing. It's not super heavy duty tactical type stuff. It's a single strap pack. I was kind of inspired by the um, the game Division to uh, try this out and, and kind of see how it go. I might do a separate review on the bag. Now, some of the junk is falling out, so let's introduce you to it. All right, so with the bag dump, uh, what we're going to look at here is I have a battery that's going to live in a bag full time. This is a sealed AGM lead acid battery. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it goes upside down or right side up. It is rechargeable and it's 12 volt. These go for about oh, $20, 25 dollars depending on where you buy them. Uh, what I did was I hooked this up with OEM connectors. Now you can also do this with Anderson power pole and maybe not have the confusion over polarity on them. But on this, uh, these are color coded. So I set these all up to be color coded. Uh, red is positive, white is negative. We get into some of these crossover wires, you could easily lose track of your polarity. So again, you, you, you look at what's coming and going. The logic on this usually is, and I'm going to look at this. If it's a power receiving device, the red, the positive, the hot, is going to be exposed. If it's a power giving device or a battery, that is usually going to be the, the one that's covered up. And there is an exception to the rule, and the exception is battery chargers. Now this battery charger, I've decided to make part of the kit. Now this is a power pack. It recharges off of either AC with this adapter right here, and if you live in Europe, you, the, you'll get the other style plug with this. AC adapter, little barrel plug type thing. And then you also have a car cigarette lighter adapter. What I'm doing also is setting up my vehicle so that they have uh, the OEM type plugs. And with an adapter, I'll be able to work, charge all my stuff and, and basically build a little microgrid of, of 12 volt batteries doing this. So that if I have this set up in a vehicle, I will be charging these batteries. And if I dismantle it to go on foot, well, all the onboard batteries are charged up. The Duracell uh, battery is a receiving battery only. This power pack is capable of charging other batteries. It's kind of an interesting little switching mechanism. It has a, uh, a, a, its own little tester for polarity when you hook it up to stuff. The boost button we're not going to use on a radio type of setup. What we would use that with is that this thing, even though it's not a super high capacity battery, about, uh, oh, let's see, 38.3 watt hours, that's about 2 amps, roughly. 
of power, uh, two amp hours in this thing. But what it can do is it can actually dump that into a car battery to jump start a car battery. You're not going to be able to crankety crank a totally dead car with this thing, but let's say it's a little weak. You want to give a car battery a little boost to get it started, this thing could do that. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up my vehicles with these types of plugs, so that's, that's the option that's available to me. Any other little parts and accessories that come with whatever radio I'm putting in a bag, they'll also go into that main compartment. Uh, I have a vehicle magnet mount antenna, and because most of the time this is going to be a dual band radio, I'm purchasing dual band antennas for that. I have a uh, programming cable and software. No better place to keep it but with the radio, and of course, the owner's manual for the radio that's currently here. Also, a couple of these little OEM adapter plugs. Um, I find that if I need to change a polarity on a connection, um, whether it's something to a charging device or receiving device, you can use these little Y connectors to do that because the way it, it crosses over in these, you can, you can kind of see what's going on in that. And you'll be able to work that, depending on how you flip it, to be able to right side or wrong side uh, get the polarity on something. What I'm not going to do at this stage in the game though is hook the radio up with both batteries at the same time. Basically the radio is only going to go to the Duracell battery because I double, triple, quadruple checked. I'm going to, I'm going to see, I'm going to undo this right now. Um, I, I double, triple, quadruple checked my polarity when I was setting up the radio with the Duracell battery, which is going to be the main battery that this thing would work with. So we'll show a little bit how those connections work. All right, so with the bag put together, uh, what we'll show is I run the radio off the Duracell battery. I don't run it off the lithium power pack. I, if I were to use a tablet computer with this or one of the more advanced radios that will interface a tablet with a radio for some data transfer type stuff, I want my set to be able to work with that. The particular radio I do is not. So again, we've got a, a pretty good size uh, power pack here that does not directly run the radio, indirectly runs it. So we're set up for running. That goes on the side. The other thing is I've got a headset here that again kind of goes on the side but would eventually be part of the kit because I have um, uh, plans for upgrading the radio at a later time. Right now, what I do is the part that's going to be relatively permanent, 12 volt battery that runs the stuff. We've got OEM type connectors, which are common with the battery tender type devices that are going to run through. Uh, you can see the color coding on this so that this, this is color coded unlike uh, Anderson power pole connectors which are shape coded which might I, I, I consider them to be superior but they're not as commercially universal or readily available in a lot of stuff what I've had to do here is work an adapter the vehicle magnet mount antenna in a lot of your ham radio type antenna has uh, this this type of plug on the end Mobile type antennas tend to use a different type of a setup and this would normally screw into the top of a radio and if somebody custom builds a radio case we, we get this type of, of antenna and let's get this thing into focus here uh, but we've got a couple little nuts on a, on a thing here and this was if I were to do this in a plastic box I would be able to mount this antenna onto the plastic box on this little base that came with this adapter it's it's a much thinner cable and it's really just an adapter cable now to keep this thing behaved it's it's a rubber ducky antenna uh, we've got a really thick cable here because this is just it's basically an adapter it's a one foot adapter I set it up so that we can just get the cables from the back of the radio into the bag because this whole portion of the bag normally stays closed um, what I did to run cables through slots in a bag is I cut holes and I burn around them. This is a nylon material, so when you scorch nylon material, uh, what you'll do is you'll stop it from fraying anymore. 
and depending on what portion of the bag I'm passing through is what is going to work on the, fr the, the main surface of the bag and we'll be going over that next but basically it's, it's a few pass points through here plus uh, a bungee pass point just to keep the radio from kind of shifting around too much and so we pass through the mesh here and of course the rest of this is just storing accessories and other stuff for the radio like a programming cable and then the rest of this equipment kind of goes in these other little pockets but this main pouch wouldn't be open unless you're doing something to use the radio you can all pretty well work with those pouches closed once it's all hooked up. Alright, so with the radio configured to work in a bag, um, you, you, you would generally take the bag off to do this. Now, it, it can work, you could receive a call while you're wearing a bag, but this is not a replacement for a walkie-talkie. Okay, so this isn't really a, a, a walkie-talkie. This is kind of like a bag that you bring along, you put in a vehicle, you set up camp, but it's, it's a bag you could kind of strap onto other stuff and go with. So the normal operating position for a lot of this would just be kind of setting out here, tabletop, or maybe hanging up on a tree or hanging up on something. So what I had was just a couple of bungee knots holding the radio in. Uh, we could see the other end of the pass-through holes for the antenna adapter, the power, power cord going through that thing. Well, this particular radio is known to get kind of warm when it's, when it's been operating. So what we would do is we would kind of have this, bag, this pouch open and we really don't want to have anything else in there with that radio. Not the handset, nothing else that, that isn't directly attached to that radio is going to go in here. We don't want it stuff in here. There's a small cooling fan on the newest model. This is Juentai 6188. Not the best radio out there, but it's compact. It's basically the Balfang Mobile as opposed to a walkie-talkie. It does the same basic frequency range. Programming it can be a little bugger, but it's possible. The thing is, you can use software and as a programming cable to, to program this. It will operate 20 to 25 watts power. It doesn't have a lower power setting. So if you're going to be doing low power setting type radio stuff, you step down to a handheld. What we can do, though, is we can power this thing up. You'll see that, that that all powers up. I'm going to turn the volume down. I'm not transmitting right now, so whatever frequency that's on, is just, I'm listening only. And so we've, we can work our controls on the radio. This one has an external speaker right here that's plenty loud enough to go through the whole radio. And of course we would be able to make calls and, and have some controls here. Access to the readout. Now once you have all of your settings really dialed in on this thing, it's, it's possible to close up the bag, just use the microphone, and a speaker really is not badly muffled with the bag closed. It's, it's really not a problem. The other thing is, if, if we set, it, set up other types of radios that can use an external speaker, it's not hard to have a little auxiliary speaker on the outside of this. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. The antenna on the inside, we're going to shut this down right now. Um, the antenna, which is on the inside pouch, comes through a hole in the upper pouch, kind of in the back of this thing, and just kind of comes out here. I can shove it down into the radio, it's semi-flexible, and just close that pouch, or I can kind of pop this out. Now, the freer and straighter that antenna is allowed to sit, the better the quality of signal you're going to have. But this isn't supposed to be a great big thing sticking way up in the air to advertise it too much because I have another antenna that's inside of there. This is basically for just when it's in a bag and the campsite thing. So there's the bag antenna, which is not really going to be our main long range type of thing. It's just basically to have enough power to push that signal a little harder, let's say, around uh, heavily wooded areas in a building, maybe out in the, out in, uh, the mountains. Uh, we got to push the signal a little harder than our little handhelds are going to do. I can still do this from the bag. 
The other thing is, if we change out to a better radio, all we're doing is changing out the radio itself. Uh, I detach it, undo the little knot holding the, uh, the radio in place, I can put this in a vehicle. If I'm going to be using this a lot, and the radio is enclosed in a couch, in a pouch, it's it's going to get hot. So we've got to we've got to watch out for that. And in order to facilitate cooling, we kind of open this up, we vent it, and that's how it's going to work. It's also the reason why I'm not going to have the radio buried under all sorts of other stuff inside of the uh, inside of the the package. If I'm going to be traveling with this, then the microphone and everything goes into this outer pouch and can remain attached to the radio. If I'm going to be using this in a vehicle, I can just kind of have this dangling, or I can stick it in this little water bottle pouch here, and, and that works too. So it may or may not look, you know, immediately as a radio set up to somebody, but the idea is that it's going to be much more powerful than, let's say, your, your any handheld you've got, and it will have a battery that lasts longer as you're transmitting. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish with this thing. If you have suggestions, we're kind of looking at that. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.